Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keeping it free, .blogspot.com. I'm an attorney in Northern California. Um, started out as a litigator, got lured by clients into doing family law. Uh, very appreciative of all the support I have gotten. Let's talk about a racially tinged case. Race is still a big part of American life. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's my belief that predators target people who are helpless or who at least appear to be helpless right there's a power dynamic going on in some of these predatory cases now I just watched a great show from one of my heroes Tamron Hall she has a series called Deadline Crime I give it a thumbs up I encourage everyone to watch the show and to my surprise I caught the show a little bit after it started I was watching the show and I was outraged so outraged that I'm here literally just an hour later here to talk about it the only thing that gives me solace the only thing that calms me down even remotely is the fact that on the show after I had watched it for maybe half an hour Tyler Perry appears apparently he's on early but I missed that part he appears and he talked about how the case outraged him and he's offering and this offer is still out there a one hundred thousand dollar reward for information that leads to a conviction in the case now the case simply put is an outrage it involves a cop who of course is no longer on the force what I want to do right here is to invite people who are friends of law enforcement who want to defend this cop's actions because in my opinion they're indefensible but if you want to disagree with me and try to defend this cop's actions let's take this case out of the shadows and I want you in the comment section to this video to lay out where you feel I'm being unfair right it's a white cop the victims and I'm gonna use the word victims right are a Mexican born national right a Latino and an african-american right now in this case incredibly I want you to remember at all times that there has been no trial that there has been no grand jury no prosecution needless to say there's no conviction right so this is that case that's still being investigated but I personally believe this is opinion not a statement of fact right I personally believe that the perpetrator here is obvious well let's go through it right on October the 1st 2003 Felipe Santos, an undocumented worker, was involved in a minor traffic accident in Florida. Right? He tries to make amends to the other driver, tries to pay cash so the other driver doesn't call police. The other driver decides she's going to call police. She calls police. An officer appears Steve Calkins now let's not beat around the bush here Steve Calkins is a white guy 
I believe race matters in this case. You can decide if I'm right or if I'm wrong. But Steve Calkins appears, right? And he places Felipe Santos, who is, let's get this right here, 5'7", 150 pounds. He's 24 years old. He's the father of a young child, right? 5'7", 150. He places Santos in the back of his police car. According to the other driver, this is the driver who called police, right? According to the other driver, Calkins makes a statement to the effect that he was tired of pulling people over who didn't have a license. Folks, that's the last time Felipe Santos is seen. That's it. He vanishes. How's this possible in America? The last time this guy is seen or heard from is in the back of a police vehicle. He's not arrested. How's that possible? Cop places you in the back of a police car and you don't end up arrested. Calkins claimed that because Santos was, let me read the quote, polite and cooperative, he decided after placing Santos in the back of his police car and driving off with him, he decided to just drop him off at a Circle K. Remember the store, Circle K. Right? There's no police report. Right? Excuse me. There's no arrest report. Obviously, this is investigated. And Calkins comes up with statements later. But understand, this is the last this guy is seen. Now, there are people who cared about this guy. Right? His wife, for example, never questioned by police. Did you know that the day this guy goes missing, his boss calls police to arrange to pay bail. It's at that time that they find out that the guy who was driven off by the cop was not arrested. Right? Calkins wants us to believe that this guy just got a lift to a Circle K, didn't call his boss, even though he had been sending his earnings back to Mexico, didn't call his family, just decided to vanish. So, two and a half months later, and before I even get to the rest of the story, let me just point out, I know I have a multiracial crowd here, and I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. Right? But, understand, when I hear a case like this, the issue of race is practically dripping off the page. How could this have not been investigated? I'm sorry, but I believe that if Felipe Santos wasn't Latino, if he were Caucasian, and if people saw him placed in the back of a police car, and that's the last we ever see of him, then you find out he's not even arrested. There's not even an arrest report. Then the cop is claiming that after an accident, 
involving an undocumented worker where the cop responds pursuant to a call to police. We're to believe that that cop decides, you know what, I'm going to overlook the fact that this guy was in an accident. I'm going to overlook the fact that this guy's undocumented. I'm just going to set him free at a Circle K that doesn't pass the smell test. I believe that if the victim were white, this would have been investigated. His status as a father, as a husband, would have been explored. People would have been interviewed. This would have been an issue. So two and a half months later, on January the 12th, 2004, of course, nothing's happened to Calkins. He's still on the force. Right? He's still being paid by our tax dollars. Think about it. Right? Is this the cop you would want around your family? Right? Is this the kind of cop you would want to support? So, 27 year old, 5'8, 160 pound Terrence Williams, African American, roughly the same size as Felipe Santos, is seen by multiple employees of the Naples Memorial Cemetery being patted down by Officer Steve Calkins. Right? He's being patted down as he stands by his white Cadillac. Right? Think it through. It's a white Cadillac. Calkins then places him in the back of his police car. They drive off. How do we know this? Because it's witnessed by multiple employees of the cemetery. Calkins then returns to the cemetery within the hour. Witnesses see him, third parties. He then moves the white Cadillac. It's an older white Cadillac, distinctive car, from the parking spot to the side of the road. The keys are later found next to the car on the ground. Folks, that's the last time Terrence Williams is ever seen. When he's in police custody, in the back of a police car, just like Felipe Santos. Right, folks? Do I have to say another thing to warrant some kind of prosecution in this case? The same cop, two different men, last seen alive by third party witnesses, right, being placed in the back of this police officer's vehicle. How many of these Discovery ID shows have you watched where murder convictions have been obtained in cases where the body hasn't been found, right? Or where the body's been cremated but the circumstances indicate that only one person, right, could have done the murder. Well, let's get back to this Terrence Williams case. Because I believe this is shocking. So Terrence Williams, who himself is a father of four, had a mother. Right? Understand, these victims are real people. They have families. So Terrence Williams' mother, who loves her son, goes to the cemetery, talks to the cemetery workers, finds out what they saw, 
right? Her son being placed in the back of a police car by Steve Calkins. So the cops then asked Calkins about what happened. Now for legal reasons, and just bear in mind, I'm a Stanford Law School graduate. My firm is at richarddwyer.com. I'm going to talk in terms of my personal opinion. I'm not making any factual statements. Right? I have to protect myself from claims of defamation and what have you from people who might feel that they want to somehow quash people who speak out about the facts of a particular case. So here, just understand, I'm telling you, this is my opinion. I wasn't there, right? The cops actually asked Calkins, shortly after Terrence Williams goes missing, this is a matter of days, not months, days. They asked Calkins about whether he dealt with someone with a white Cadillac at a cemetery. Now let's think this through. On a typical day, how many white Cadillacs do you think Calkins encounters at a cemetery? During a regular cop day, how often do you feel Calkins goes to cemeteries? Aren't the facts of this case a bit singular? Well, incredibly, Calkins says that he doesn't recall. Right? White Cadillac? He doesn't know. At a cemetery? He doesn't know. Right? It's on tape, him saying, gee, I, you know, White Cadillac? I, I don't know. Now, let's be blunt here. Again, this is my personal opinion. I think he's lying, right? I think there's, I think it's clear, in my opinion, that he's lying. In part because there's a tape recording of him calling dispatch, requesting the tow of the white Cadillac. Well, let's go further. The call is racial, right? It's race-based. He calls the car a homie, Cadillac, right? In the call, this is his call to dispatch. The day that he asked for the Cadillac to be towed. Right? Same day he encounters Terrence Williams in the call. This cop claims not to know who or where the driver is. He says maybe he's out there in the cemetery. He'll come back and his car will be gone. Here again, I believe that's a lie. Understand. We shouldn't tolerate this. This guy's supposed to be a public servant. He's supposed to be a member of law enforcement. Right? The judicial system, the legal system, shouldn't tolerate public servants lying to the public. Well, let's just say I believe this is a lie. In fact, he calls 20 minutes later to request a background check on Terrence Williams. That's the name he gives, Terrence Williams. He knows who the driver is. 20 minutes later, he calls in Terrence Williams' name. He even uses a birth date that Terrence Williams had used in the past when Williams dealt with law enforcement. So here you have a cop 
whose initial story, in my opinion, is a complete lie. Right? Why is he telling these stories after a black man who he places in the back of his police car goes missing, is never seen or heard from again. So, Calkins' story then, we'll just say, changes, evolves. He submits an incident report. In the incident report, his memory suddenly improves. He remembers Terrence Williams. He remembers that he followed Williams' car to the cemetery, right? The car had expired tags. Williams was driving on a suspended license. He claims that when they get to the cemetery and Williams gets out of his car, Williams then asks for a ride to the Circle K. Right, same store chain that is part of his story in the Santos disappearance. Right, and Williams claims that he needed the lift to the Circle K because he had a job there and he was late for work. Now here again, I believe that's a lie. Right? If you disagree, go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let's shine a light on this case. Right? Let's shine a light on this case. Now, just understand why the Circle K story that Calkins comes up with when his memory improves. Right? There must be a lot of white Cadillacs at cemeteries in Collier County, apparently, right? Well, let's just say this. Williams didn't work at the Circle K. Right? He would have no reason to ask a cop for a lift to the Circle K. Not only that, the Circle K seems to be a favorite place for Calkins, right? Because this is the second story. Isn't it amazing? Coincidental? that within three months, two guys go missing after being placed in the back of Calkins' police car, right? They go missing while in police custody. And then we're hearing from the cop who was the last person seen with both of them that their stories involved a Circle K. How coincidental. Well, let's go further here. How credible is this? Calkins is claiming that after encountering Williams, who is a young black man in the South, right, who doesn't have a valid driver's license, and who is in a car with expired tags, we're to believe that rather than arrest him, this cop decides, all right, Terrence, that's all fine and dandy. You want me to give you a lift someplace? You mean this cop just is following this car, then after following the car, knowing that it has expired plates, right? talking with the driver who cannot produce a valid driver's license. We're supposed to believe that the cop then decides to drive this guy to work? You know, maybe it's, it's me. But I just don't find that remotely credible. I just, don't, I just don't understand how the local prosecutor can hear a story like that and then decide not to immediately prosecute. Well, let's just say, too, that you should know that the claim that he drove Williams to the Circle K, in my opinion, is a lie. 
Because did you know the Circle K has cameras? Did you know that the cameras don't have Calkins's police car ever pulling up to the Circle K? They don't have Williams getting out of a police car at the Circle K. In fact, did you know that the cameras at the Circle K don't support Calkins' story? You have a cop here claiming a bad memory early on making statements about not knowing where the driver is early on then he changes his story to some Circle K story and there's nothing to support it so in the end you have two minority males roughly the same size and that's important because we're thinking about the motive here of someone who for whatever reason has minority men roughly the same size disappearing from the back of his police car. Right? Who knows? Maybe because these guys were smaller. Maybe Calkins felt he could overpower them. Maybe, maybe Calkins has a secret life. Maybe he's attracted to minority men of a certain size. Right? I'm speculating here. I don't know. We're just speculating here online. Right? But what I do think I know is that this case warrants a prosecution. If the local prosecutor is a little bit nervous about it, take this case before a grand jury. How many how many men have to disappear, literally disappear, while in police custody before we get a prosecution? Right, folks? These two men disappeared in the custody of the same cop. Right? The cop's story doesn't jive with the other driver in the Santos case. Right? The one who called for law enforcement. The cop story doesn't jive with his own taped calls to dispatch in the Williams story. Right? Both of these guys disappear without a trace. It's an outrage. Let me point out that Steve Calkins now is still walking the streets a free man. The police department, in my opinion, had the common sense to fire this guy. Right? So he's moved on and he's been able to move on in his life and do other things. Santos wasn't able to move on. Williams wasn't able to move on. How many people watching this video think race didn't play a part? Right? I'm guessing that if Santos or Williams had a lot of money, were politically connected, were the brothers or sons of some, you know, wealthy family who knew people, I'm guessing they don't vanish without a trace from this guy's car. Understand, too, the guy encounters Santos after a traffic accident, right? An actual traffic accident where the other driver calls in the accident. And we're to believe that the cop then decides after putting him in the car and driving off with him, I'm not going to arrest him. Is that credible to you? He encounters Williams when, let's face it, Williams is on a suspended license. Wouldn't you be incredibly lucky if a cop stopped you and you're thinking, man, my license is suspended. You know what? My tags are expired. 
Then the cop, after placing you in the back of the police car, says, you know what? I'm not going to arrest you. I don't find Calkins' story to be credible. I don't believe a prosecutor should find the story credible. Given that several people have been convicted of murder in cases where the corpse has not been found, I don't understand why this cop wasn't prosecuted. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video and I encourage you to look up the case online. Look up the disappearance of Terrence Williams and Felipe Santos. The case will pop up. Many people are talking about it. Um, excellent show on Dateline Crime by Tamron Hall. Um, simply put, this is an outrage. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.